Hello and welcome to the arranging stream and we're starting uh, an hour earlier than usual today and this is uh, because uh, I am going away this afternoon and so I wanted to just get <laughs> an extra hour to be able to uh, to travel. Uh, this is just to visit someone uh, so it's not you know big but I am actually uh, speaking of traveling I am actually going to be going back to London next week. Uh, I've been away for over a year uh, and now I've kind of decided that I need to uh, get on with things and so uh, I'll actually be traveling uh, on Friday which means that I won't be able to run a stream next week because of that um, but I hope you'll excuse me uh, I also have to hand back so like the the microphone I'm using and the sound card I'm using those aren't uh, those aren't mine those are borrowed so I need to hand those back which also means that <laughs> even if I uh, if I were here, I, I wouldn't really be able to stream the same way because I do need those to be able to, uh, to stream. But I will, uh, I'll have plenty of time when I go back to the UK because I'll be self-isolating for uh, 10 days. Uh, so I should be able to run a stream <laughs> the week after. But it's good also because I, um, I need to record. Uh, I'm doing actually some... Uh, um, I'm essentially making instructional videos for my old university on how to use Sibelius. Imagine that. <laughs> something I'm, you know, fairly okay at. Uh, so that is something I'm going to be doing in um, um, in about a week's time. But today we are arranging. And actually, I'm going to be arranging something for work. So I do actually have a couple of gigs lined up. You know, nothing nothing massive, but I do have two small gigs at the end of August. And so I thought uh, now would be a good time to prepare the material. So uh, as as archipelago arrangers, we often get asked to perform medleys. And if you're not familiar with medleys, a medley is just um, a combination of different songs put together. Medleys can be extremely clever or extremely simple, depending on you know how clever you want to be, how clever you want to be, and how much work you want to create for yourself. So I've kind of done, I have done a fair few medleys in the past that I have kind of been <laughs> perhaps being a bit more clever than I really need to be. Uh, for this particular gig, it's not extremely well paid, and so I'm going to be uh, taking kind of the easier solution, um, and that is. And I think for a lot of uh, people who are on choirs, this might be a thing where you get asked to just string together a few of your songs. You know, just string together, you know, like you just do that. Um, which, of course, is, can be tricky because there's a few things you need to consider when you do medleys or mashups or whatever kind of combination of songs you want to do. So let me open up some... Uh, uh, let me open up paint, actually, so I can start describing what's about to happen. So we've got medley. We're doing a medley and let's get this a little bit bigger. There might be better solutions for doing this, but I just had paint open, so. Right, so I have, essentially, I'm gonna be doing two. And the only reason why I agreed to two, I'm not gonna be doing two today, I'm probably just gonna be doing one of them today. Um, the reason why I agreed to it was because I already arranged a bunch of the songs that they requested, which means that I can do mashups of songs I already have arranged, which, you know, makes things really easy. But I think that's also uh, maybe interesting for you guys because this is, uh, you know, this is some sort of, what am I trying to say? This is not a situation that's unlikely to occur like you you could easily be asked to do this sometimes they'll have um well i mean usually clients don't really care immediately about whether you have the arrangements available they might but for a lot of the time they just want oh we just want to rock out to you know um celebration by cool and the gang and and you're like, okay, well, we don't have an arrangement of that, uh, so we're gonna have to get that. And then you'll you'll tell them, okay, we need to prepare a score, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. And then they'll be like, okay, fine, we'll pay for that. Um, but uh, a lot of the time, you'll just be given like, we want a medley of these songs, these songs, these songs. Um, in this case, the songs requested were songs that I already had arranged, so that was you know <laughs> quite a relief. Um, so as I said, there'll be two. Now, first of all, when you set 
when you put together a medley, you have to think about do they fit together? And then it'll be in terms of theme. It'll be in terms of um, theme, uh, time signature. That's really quite important. Like key signature, you can change. Time signature is harder to change. If you want a, an example of uh, me doing this, uh, going against this, you can check out. I think I did. There was like one episode where I like had I had the like um, a breakaway joke where I was like, "Wow, imagine if we just made a medley where, where we just put together songs that just happened to do with rain." And then I I matched up like four. I had four songs running in counterpoint, terrible counterpoints that did not work, and like. Uh, Singing in the rain, my favorite things, um, something else. Um, I can't remember. What, Umbrella by Rihanna. <laughs> I just stuck them together. They were in different time signatures. I put them in the same key, but like we had essentially, it was just a joke to show like you can't just stick any old song like songs together. It's not going to work. And the singers did a, an admirable job just doing it, and it, it was really quite fun. But it sounded horrible. <laughs> so yeah, you gotta, you know, ideally you want songs that have some sort of thematic link, but they ideally should be in time signature, in the same time signature, and also same tempo or similar tempo, um, because you know ultimately you want to be able to go between songs, and of course you. It's going to be much easier for you if the songs have the same tempo. So these are things to think about if you're putting together a medley or a mashup. You can also think about, and they work in counterpoints. And this is where you know we we step into the trying to be clever, you know, area, which I have done, and I I, I kind of I can't I can't resist doing it. It's uh, when you work as an arranger. You want to be clever. You want to use your tricks. You want to be able to get some counterpoint going. Like it's just, <clears throat> it's like asking someone to paint, but be like, don't use any colors. Which okay, that's fine. But you, you kind of want to use those colors because they're there. And yeah. Anyway, okay. So these are considerations you need to go through. So I, of course I've already done this because I wanted to make sure that I wasn't going to be sitting around like oh, for half the stream thinking, is that going to work? Is that going to work? I've kind of worked out something that will work, but I'll, you know, I'm explaining the process because this, uh, this is supposed to be an educational stream where I teach you things. Speaking of which, don't forget to ask me questions. If you, if you're wondering about something, I'm assuming you're just taking notes being like, mm -hmm, yes, that makes sense. Yes. Do they fit together? Indeed. I will write it down. <laughs> Um, also, you need to consider, so I'm going to remove this now. If you were taking notes, you can jump back and pause the screen. Um, uh, technical ability. And this also goes along with style. That is, if you're running a classical choir and you know that they, uh, they're, they're great at creating beautiful sounds, but they, they maybe don't have loads of groove, then of course you don't want to offer them a medley of funk songs because um, you you'll, you'll have trouble getting the right um, the right approach. Of course, you shouldn't you shouldn't assume. Like I uh, I work I work with a lot of singers who will you know they're professionals and it's surprising just the the range of sounds they can produce. But definitely think about you know is this within the capabilities of my of my group. Uh, you'll also have to think about rehearsal time. There'll be a lot of time, you know, needed to learn three songs smashed into one. There's a lot more, like with, if you're doing, just uh, imagine the song, that's just one song. But if you're doing a mashup of various uh, John Lennon songs mashed up together, then the singers are going to have to learn Imagine and they're going to have to learn all the other songs as well. It's going to add so much to the rehearsal time. So... Again, you'll have to consider like how much can I really stick in here? Medleys will, they don't have to, but they kind of will, just by nature of them being medleys, end up being much longer than, you know, just one-off arrangements. Not necessarily. I mean, I think a good approach to doing medleys is to not make them horrendously long. 
You only need to do maybe one verse of each uh, of each song. You know, that'll be enough. Uh, next, you need to think about choreography. And of course, this, this, you know, might not be super important. Let's put this one in parentheses, actually. Because, you know, not all choirs do choreography. You don't necessarily need it. You just need to kind of move it, you know, groove to the song. Um, but there'll be kind of more shifting... There'll be a shifting message happening. Like with... Um, well, if you've done the first one correctly, then that might not be so much a problem. But you might have four songs that kind of have very different stories. They might be linked together some in some way. But, you know, you might switch from, uh, from a, a male lead character to a female, female lead character. It's really hard to say female today. <laughs> uh, female. There we go. English. Uh, do they fit together? Uh, if they do so thematically, that doesn't necessarily mean that they're going to do so, you know, in every way. And so you might have to think about, you know, your, your singers are going to have to change their performance a bit over time. And that's, you know, that is something that's worth considering. If you're just starting and singing and, you know, you're not, you're not too animated and that's fine. But, yes, you know, music has emotion and, you know, singers need to be actors singers need to express that and so they need to be able to respond to those changes in emotion and yeah a bit of choreography might go a long way but again that that will also add rehearsal time okay i think uh we've kind of uh, <laughs> talked enough about this let's move on to our medley so i've got um i've actually put this together in a little uh, i'll get my little uh at least structure. I just wrote this in a text document. There's nothing particularly fancy. This is the first medley. Uh, we'll, uh, this one we'll talk about later, but there, first medley. Probably can't see that very well. Let's make this big and there we go. No, everyone can read it. You don't have to go like, after the, <laughs> the screen. First medley, uh, see, I've already, I picked the key for both of them because I knew that that's, you know, a potential issue. First one, uh, so essentially they requested Night to Five, Twist and Shout, and they requested We Are Family and Respect. And they also wanted some Queen songs. And I'm like, okay, well, we'll do these two because I know them. And because I thought they, these will make for good transition pieces. Okay, so I already have a recordings of, well, I don't, uh, there are recordings available of Night to Five and of Respect. These are on London Contemporary Voices. Uh, YouTube channel. In fact, let me uh, let me put them in the chat. I need to make use of this. Um, so let's see. We got respect. All right. Uh, I hope it's going to turn up early in the results. It does not. Oh, that's a shame. Okay. So I, I really quite. Uh, enjoyed these are i think arrangements that turn out quite well uh so let's see we've got respect yeah and we have what's the other one that's five So what's good about using existing arrangements is that your singers will probably already be familiar with them which means there's less rehearsal time needed you don't need to reinvent the wheel. You take something that they're already familiar with and you just add some more stuff to it and it's going to make it easier. And I think we only have like one rehearsal as well, which, you know, that is quite relevant then. There we go. Those are the two ones I have with videos. Uh, Twist and Shout, we don't have a video of, and we don't have a video of. Oh, so we are family. I actually only just part of another medley. So that's not a full arrangement. That's just a medley that I did. Uh, so, yeah, well, uh, well, these are complete arrangements that I've done, and we are the champions. I'm not done, but I'm going to do that on the stream. Okay, so I already decided on key. Now, easily, 9 to 5 was in G major. Let's write this in. I arranged it in G major. I'm not saying Dolly Parts didn't perform it in G major. I can't quite remember, but I arranged it in G major. And Twist and Shout, I arranged in F major. 
And let's go this way. We Are The Champions is a song that starts in C minor. Uh, right in text because I did already. And it goes to F major. So you'll see that this makes things easier for us because they are quite close. The major keys are quite close together. And so I looked at, OK, can I put 95 down to F? And then I decided, actually, it's going to it's going to get very uh, it's going to get very low if I put it quite as far down as F, because I've already worked this out. So it fits perfectly into into G. So you don't want to transpose things too far. Down a semitone is fine. And Twist and Shout, again, I wouldn't want to put that up as far as G, but I think F sharp's fine. Again, it's it's kind of, it's very minor differences. And of course, with acapella singing, key is likely to fluctuate. This is just unavoidable. unavoidable. It's just uh, the nature of a live acapella performance. So I thought F sharp then, okay, stick them between there. I know F sharp looks scary, but it's it's um, it's not it's not you know it, yes it is going to be with that attitude, but <laughs> F sharp it's just especially when you're singing it's just you just sing it. Okay, so let's have a let's open up some of these scores because you know much of the the arranging of the individual songs that stuff I cover all the time. Um, but stringing them together, that's the tricky part. How are we going to transition between these? So I've got, I've already got my, <laughs> my, um, my songs here. I'm going to change the 9 to 5 one to, uh, that's medley. Because that's where I'll put all the stuff. Let's open it up. And let's close that. Okay. So this is a finished arrangement I have. This is, uh, yeah, as I said, you can check this out. Um, now I am going to be changing this because ultimately you have to think about duration as well. And they kind of wanted 15 to 20 minutes of music. Now, if you look at this, this does end up two and a half minutes. Like this is just two and a half minutes. This is the whole song. It's just two and a half minutes. So, you know, if I assume that I, at the very shortest, have to make each arrangement seven and a half minutes long to, to fit within the quota, you know, two and a half minutes is not even half of that. So I really do need to kind of keep this whole arrangement. But that's fine then, because the singers will already be familiar with the song. And they'll be like, oh yeah, 95, yeah, I performed this loads. You know, this isn't, this isn't, New to, new to me. And there's a recording available. So, as I said, this has to be in F sharp major. Okay, select all, and then go... Uh, is it noted? But yeah, transpose. And then, I usually transpose by interval. I guess we could go... Let's try the key one, see if that... Uh, yeah, I want to use double sharp sets. Boom. Sorted it out. Now you'll notice that it does get Oops, let's uh, sort of that quickly. So optimize star spacing and then reset node spacing. Uh, it does get really low in some of the parts here, like altos all the way down on F sharp. It's fine. It's not far enough from the original. Like I, I already worked out that this would be fine in G, uh, depending on, you know, you see the, this texture, for instance, is very, very bare. So the altos will be fine here. But... Um, yeah, it's not far enough removed that I think it's going to be a problem. So this is all just nine to five. It's fine. I'll actually change the title as well. Uh, first, I got the uh, melee thing. <laughs> I'm being. I'll update all the, the the writing credits and stuff later on. Just the desecrating my old scores, and um, we'll go to the end. So the one it's supposed to be transitioning into is. Twist and shout. Uh, now I thought about this yesterday. So uh, twist and shout with a starts with a da 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 dum da 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 
It starts with a bunch of da's. Uh, my original arrangement does anyway. So what I can do, just have a slight increase in tempo here, maybe. So. It just moves straight into the, the next piece. Now, I can use something called the append function here to add the next score in. And then I'll work out the, you know, the, the peculiarities of the transition afterwards. Go to file, append. And then I need to navigate to my folder, medley, and twist and shut. Oh, can't append score saved in, okay. Uh, you know, you're making things hard for me, Sibelius. Okay, let's open it up. Let's see here. Did I make this in the, no? Is this really in the older version? Okay, so you'll see here, it is da 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 dum, da 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 I really wish that we had an arrangement available of this. It's, uh, sorry, recording. Okay, well, I guess we save this and then close it and then try to append it again. So it's saved in the same... Eh, same version. Let me twist and shout. Yeah, there we go. There it is. It just stuck the score in now. Cool. So my idea is I will have this... Actually, let's, uh, let's transpose this. So we'll do the same thing. Shift T is the key command, and then F sharp. Oh, there. I will have to rewrite some of this. Oh, it's yeah. So you see, it's uh, it's transposed the notes. It just hasn't changed the key signature. That's fine. Well, uh, so this is the one I want to take away. And goodbye. Oh. Don't need a title. Cool. Uh, don't know. Then just finish this first. Um, and the tempo was. I can't remember actually. Open this again. Ah, uh, 120. Okay. So here we are. Tempo. 104. Okay. Let's copy this over. Slightly faster. 120. Again, this is the most simple way of moving to one song to another. Just find some sort of transition point. In this case, it'll be there. Well, can, we can listen to it uh, using the MIDI uh, playback so you can hear what, what it sounds like in this case. That's a perfectly fine transition. I'm, uh, I mean, kind of on, a, on an artistic level, I am a bit like, Ugh, really, are we going to do that kind of tr transition? But it's also, it's, um, it's a cost of, it's a cost efficiency kind of thing. You know, how much time do I want to spend on arranging these songs when I already have, and when I could save time by having them perform, perform a piece they already know. Hmm. I need this crescendo because it's already going to go into F here. There we go. Let's put these all at the start. And now, 
let's check how long this turned out. So let's uh, unlock the layout. Because the layout does not match. Actually, huh. What am I? Yeah, let's just unlock the whole, whole layout. So layout, unlock. That makes it so that things, if you've made layout changes, then they're, they're not gone. And uh, it can be useful if you're doing stuff like this, where you're stitching stuff together. Okay, so now we have, if we're, um, we're, if we're including this old ending, which we're not, this so far is almost five minutes. So that means that we're approaching what we need. I am uh, I am aware that it's probably going to come in just under because like we we are the champions. It's not an it's not a very long song. It's just three minutes long, and I'm not going to do the whole song. So let's um, let's see how that turns out. So Twist and Shout has this famous uh, bit where it goes like uh, oh. Which is the, uh, the thing that Bob Shaw Quartet's always do. And essentially, I think this will work quite nicely as a transition into We Will Rock You, you know. Ah, we are the champions, my friends, etc. So I'll take out my old hmm, ending here. So. Um, take this. Uh, just clean up the layout. It's so weird having these. Like I, I worked on these scores for so long, and now I can I can barely remember what I did. <laughs> okay, now I've um, not arranged we are the champions yet i have trans have transcribed it because obviously i knew that i was going to be putting it in so here it is uh and all i've done is i've written in the melody and i've written in the chord progression it is kind of that's all i need it goes really high <laughs> it goes really high i mean i've transposed this up a semitone to f sharp major but even in the original, he's like going all the way up to top C, and I'm like, ugh, Freddie Mercury, why do you have to, why do you have to be such a good singer? <laughs> um, so, I've not actually written in the tempo here. This is a beginner's mistake on my on my. I don't usually do this. We are the champions. Okay, it kind of works. We are the champion. So if, if the crotchet value stays the same, then it is pretty correct. Um, what was that? I can't quite remember. Okay, so sometimes if you're having... I often have trouble figuring out uh, metronome marks. I, you can go... Uh, I guess I can show you. Open up your browser, go to Google, and go metronome. And it actually has a metronome built in. Then you can check. Now I know. Okay, so we'll, we'll do 60 sex because that's a standard, that's a standard uh, metronome marking. There we go, text, tempo, just go like, that'll be, you know, it's, uh, um, it, it is slow. I pay my do to one, ten, one, two, one. You know, it's not terribly fast. Uh, where's the dot? Where's the dot? There we go. 
equals 66. Oops. So this should be... Yeah, that's the correct tempo. So I think that we should start with a chorus for, for uh, the medley. Um, so yeah, now this I will just arrange like I would any song. You know, it's just a, a normal uh, arrangement really. Uh, I'll take this and put it behind the chorus here. That was in C sharp minor. Uh, so let's add in C sharp minor. And then we'll start it in F major. I want us to start directly with the chorus because we're going to be finishing on the dominant in twist and shout, which means it leads nicely into into the song. Okay, F sharp major. Boom. And let's put this at the start, which should be. And delete this. So this wouldn't, I wouldn't normally, you know, encourage you to start <laughs> in the middle of a song for an arrangement, but here we're doing it because it just makes things easier. Immediately, this is too high for tenors. It's, uh, no, put it in altos. <laughs> um, um, I can't remember just how, if the, if the bass line was very particular. Um, mm. We'll just do something very simple. Dum 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 It's very very low. This is actually too low for me. That might be okay. We'll see. Dum 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 dum. Dum 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 dum. Same thing again. Dum dum dum. Dum 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 dum. Dum. Dum 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 dum. This is. Some people will disagree with the use of the double sharp here. I think where you're, when you're in a key like F sharp major. Double sharps are fine, and it also helps a little bit with um, with conte contextualizing the the music. You know, I'll know that this is going up a semitone too. G sharp. Um, mm, we are. And then we are, I want them all to sing. We are the champions. But let's get to that. Mm -hmm. In octaves. Well, I guess it's fine. Okay, let's have these in chorale style harmonies, because why not? So I'm just doing top to bottom arranging, except in this case, the melody is, of course. Uh, going to be in the middle so I'll have to essentially what I'll do is I'll do um, I'll just put the bottom note up an octave mm. 
there we go. All I'm doing now is the same thing, except now the melody is in the second highest part. And this does require that you, you know, rehearse this with your singers to make sure that they're they're bringing out the the important parts of the the melody. Mm. Actually here, so instead of having them do this in cross style harmonies, I'll have to leave the altos there and I'll have the sopranos and tennis do a response. F should be the dynamic. Like so. We'll have the basses do does. <laughs> oh, my friend, my friends, and we. There we go. So Alpha goes, my friends, then they get the response from the soprano status, my friends, and and then Alta's and we'll I'll write in what I just uh what I just did here. Oh. One, two, three, one, two, my oh. friends. That's going to clash. And, and. There we go. That'll be. So now I'm just filling in the harmony here, picking out the third and the seventh, and then altos are on the ones. So that's fine. Uh, oh. My friends. And. And we and then we're back to cross style harmonies. Goes all the way up to C sharp, and yeah, this is high, but that's fine. I think for alto singers, especially within the pop sphere, they will probably be able to do it justice, especially with this group, which is doing this gig. Now we're gonna have to move things just a little bit here. Hang on. So I'm putting these here using the transpose feature, which I've used to not explain <laughs> notations. Just I tend to arrange everything on one stop. Then I cut it. Go to let's see what it is because I always use the key command arrange there, and then it spreads it out like so. We. There, then I spread that out as well, like so. Wheel, just moving them up in inversion so that we can. Sopranos move in thirds with the altos for this bit here, and then tenors jump up to the closest inversion. Let's listen to that so far. There we go. So 
again, I'll have to, you know, notice because right now it does sound a little bit like the soprano, or like the lead line. <laughs> If I could, hmm. Now, I think it'll be fine. It's just, again, it's a rehearsal thing where you have to tell, you know, sopranos to, to, to not overwhelm the authors. <laughs> I think it'll be fine. Hmm. We keep on fighting. Again, we'll do the same thing where we have altos do their bit and then sopranos and tenors respond. Fighting, fighting to the end. Fighting to the end. Oh, we and then everyone across our harmonies. Fighting. working out the voicing here. The third in the bass. Okay, we'll do that one. Okay. Dun, 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 dun. So be. Everyone on a B. I'll do the one thing up there, actually. So I'm just thinking about voice leading. I realize that's pr probably not very exciting because I'm just like thinking and <laughs> trying stuff out. I think having everyone on B here actually is going to lead to the nicest motion going into the D sharp dominant. There we go. With the authors on the D sharp, that'll fill in the chord. Uh, let's respell this into there. Dun, 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 dun. And then by thing to the end. Then we'll have a little O here, and then we're going to cross our harmonies, which will start there. Again, with um, with the with the melody in the altos. Mm -hmm. 
Actually, we could stick the melody in the tenors here. They are in... We. I think that might be a little bit more emphatic. them to get ready to leap up. This is the next race, like so. So that's what I'm aiming for. Try, and uh, now I'm kind of just zooming through here doing my usual standby tricks. Um, yeah, I'm kind of thinking, where am I going to? How, how am I going to lead my voices to get there? Like so. Now you'll see this leads quite nicely into the next, next phrase. And what I want is O. Oh. Maybe with a little tinnitus mark on it. There we go. Let's just up a fourth and that's up a turn. Yeah. So this, this will work out quite nicely, I think. Let's uh, let's jump up a little bit here. Just a. Just to give it a bit more of a rising sentiment kind of thing. We'll have them all move up one inversion. That's simple way it'll be easy for them to find their notes and it'll be easy to move there okay we'll keep on fighting and then we go on to the next chord I'll move the melody back into the alto here, I think. Or should I? recording is quite weird and how they play this but which is why I was having a little bit of trouble figuring out the chords. Bean Dog says good song choice. <laughs> Thank you. Yeah if you want to from the beginning this is I'm not going to be arranging the whole song. I'm I'm doing this as part of a medley. So I already have a bunch of songs stringed together and I'm just kind of sticking in this in. This was the only one I didn't have arranged already and so I'm <laughs> I'm arranging it quickly uh, to fit into the medley. Uh, in the super funky F, uh, F sharp major. <laughs> um, so it's definitely some sort of E dominant. If you listen to the original, like this the, the, this chord is always sa sounds a bit weird. I think that I feel like they they kind of just like don't voice it out completely and don't really do anything until they get to the next tonic. Um, but it is for now. I think I might have simplified the course just a bit here. Mm. We are the champions. Mm. We are the champions. Mm. 
might change this to uh, again, it's kind of let's do something like a B minus six there. So you get a four five kind of motion. And we are the champions. No time. That'll be the easiest way to get around, I think. So in this case, again, I'm just going to work with the voices. Who does the melody here? Just I suppose we're at the harmony. We. That's the melody. I think that'll be the best motion for the upper parts. So let's just write that in quickly. Um. And then Arthur's down. There we go. I'm kind of tempted to do uh, <laughs> to have a descending bass line, but it's gonna. The melody's on the third here, so that's going to be a bit weird. E. This should be this should be fine. Yeah, this is fine. And yeah, we'll keep the melody in the sopranos here. Uh, maybe have them slightly quieter here. Tennis and MF, because our melody. Definitely an F here. Oops. There. It is a uh, sort of loudish, but okay. I feel like this should be not sung by everyone. Maybe just the sopranos. And then they all come in on because we are the champions. Just to break up the break it up a little bit. Uh, mm. uh, Should I double the third? Uh, well, I just have them harmonizing with the tenors. This phrase is so annoying. <laughs> nah, 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 nah. I mean, I know it's intentional, but still. <laughs> uh, how does this fit with the harmony? Like, this song is deceptively complex harmonically. You hear it, and I mean, this is the case for a lot of Queen's songs. Is The songs are really deceptively complex. Um, which any arranger who's uh, arranged Bohemian Rhapsody, like me, will be, you know, 
acutely aware of. I do think this is a first inversion E chord, and so... Yeah, that is correct. So let's see if I can make that work. I think that might be the best solution. So just been R. Oops. Slow those together. And boop. Yeah, that is that is pretty much what the song is. And this isn't going to be in the altars, but I'll change it in a bit. This in all parts. This should be on B. Yeah, we'll just do the simplest solution here. Cross our harmonies. Basis in a fairly high range. So that should sound quite emphatic. Uh, boop, boop, boop. There we go. to calm it down for this little modal cadence thing here. Yeah, a key change. It's a nice key change. I've got some nice ideas for the transition here. Uh, maybe simplify this rhythm. Of the of the world. This goes in Sopranos. And this should work nicely in the pass. Uh. 
I was tempted to have this be an open fifth, actually. Make it sound a little bit more grandiose. And then when I get here, I want to have it so you know, we are the champions of the of the world, of the world, of the world, of the world. Da, 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 dum. So each each section kind of gets their little of the world uh, echo. <laughs> Trying to get the bass a little bit lower as well. So this be tennis altos. Hmm. Tennis or altos. I think maybe here we'll start with tennis and then we can switch to altos. Sorry, we'll start with tennis and then we'll switch to altos halfway through. Because it does get really, really hot again. <laughs> ah, Freddie Mercury. Oh, you gotta go and kill every karaoke singer. <laughs> uh, I paid my dues time after time. I've not sung much today. <laughs> um, okay, so we need tennis to end up here. Yeah, that's what we want to do. Keeping this in four parts is good here. I think I kept the other ones in four parts throughout. This is usually the briefest, keep it in four parts. So I'm not going to be splitting any of them. Now, We Are The Champions does use more like extended harmony, but we don't need it. We don't, there's, there's ways around that. Usually, even with jazz music that uses complex harmonies, you can usually get it to work with just the harmony anyway, with four parts. It gets a little more tricky if you also have like, you know, loads of counter melodies and complex rhythmical stuff that, you know, you need more singers to perform. But just in terms of the harmony, usually four parts will get you a really far away. Um, so. Maybe the last two beats for the tenors. The world. There. 
going for a bit. Oops. Uh, of the world. trick where I just have you know each section come in one at a time uh, to create some rhythmic interest like so half the world Just figuring out the tenor movement here. I've paid my dues. And then that should be quite an easy, <laughs> you know, it should be easy enough to start on the same note for the next phrase. <laughs> Let's extend this. Might be quite a long while for a basis to keep it going. Maybe give them an extra breath here. Champions, oh, champions. Of the world. Uh, MP. Yeah, let's listen to this. So we've got. Goes nicely into the next one. Hmm. Uh, uh, I think this will be okay in context. Let's listen to the whole chorus. Here we'll do the very, very simplest uh, solution. I've paid my dues, I've paid my dues, time after time, time after time. I've done my sentence. Maybe all of the, maybe I'll have done the sentence together, but like these will be very, very simple call and response. Like, uh, easiest solution. <laughs> I like the easiest solution. Oh, okay. Uh.
Oh, 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 my dudes. Oh, 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 time after time. This will be simplified. Oh. This won't be the same rhythm. It'll be simpler. Half. So, of course, this is the first verse. So, you know, it is uh, not um, uh, what you would normally get after the chorus in this song, but that's because we started directly on the chorus. Uh. Uh. That will be quite simply. Uh. Uh. Mm. And then uh. let's do this in Coral style harmonies. I've done my sentence, but committed no, but committed no crime. I've done my sentence, but. What? no cry. Da, da, de, uh, da, da, da. Okay. I'm just working out what I want the backing parts to do. This will be the first one. Turn my sentence. Uh, what was my previous voicing? So there. But committed no crime. But committed no crime. I want to switch these around. Committed no crime. Da da da. Da da da. There we go. So. But come mit ed no prime. Maybe having that C sharp on this chord is going to be a little bit much. So let's get rid of that. I mean, so Freddie Mercury doesn't sing these long, so I don't need to have them long in the arrangement. Well, I wouldn't have to anyway. Like, it's always a choice. You can always choose to do things differently. But I'm going to choose not to have it long because I think it's going to be fine to have it a bit shorter. And 
bad and bad and bad mistake. And bad and bad and bad. Creating a little bit of um, uh, not call and response, but like essentially just introducing one part after. Mm. So I want there to be harmonies with the sopranos. Uh, I wanted to lead to essentially this chord. Um. Uh. And bad. Uh. And bad. And bad. And bad. And bad mistakes. Obviously, up the octave, but with the I want essentially sopranos to do and bad mistakes, something like that. But I think it's gonna in the it's gonna sound a little bit naff if I do it exactly like that. Bad. I think I should actually do this as a in the original it is G sharp man. I think I should do it as a B dominant. Mistakes. There we go. It's a very easy way to get this kind of call and response thing I'm doing, where it's like someone thinks something and then someone else responds. It's just to think about the words and try to line up your backing vocals with words because it's easier to remember. It's just the lyrics of the song, so it'll be easy for the singers to learn. It'll fit because it is the lyrics, and so, you know, it'll work most cases. Um, and also it just helps you work out rhythms. Like the natural flow of language will usually sort sort that out for you. I mean, for instance, know that I should say, you know, the emphasis should be on takes in the word mistakes rather than miss. Mistakes. Mistakes would sound a bit weird. I mean, it would sound like it's something else. But mistakes, we all know what mistakes are. We don't know what mistakes are. That's a different thing. Uh, oh. It might be okay in the context of the chord. And bad mistakes. Bad mistakes. Yeah, this will work because we know how. We're covering all the, the important notes. And bad mistakes. And then this goes on 
the upper parts, like so. And then now altos have the melody. So let's uh, let's go up a little bit in dynamic as well. We're on an MP. And we want them up on maybe MF now. Like so. Let's listen to what we have so far. With the pickup. Yeah, so now we have, um, maybe it's moving too early. I think maybe having... Actually, it kind of sounds like it's... Uh... It's not too bad, this, actually. I'll keep that. Sounds sufficiently like a cadence that I don't think it needs to be changed. <laughs> and by mistakes, I made a few, I made a few. This is, uh, oh. if you listen to the second foot, like, it's very obvious that Freddie Mercury, had he not gone into, you know, running one of the most, you know, successful rock bands ever, he would have gone into musical theatre because the way he performs this is so musical theatre, especially the second verse. It's very much like talk singing and like, uh, you know, I did everything I could. Oops. I did everything I could. And uh, it's uh, <laughs> it's very, very dramatic and it, like it belongs on the stage. Uh, of course, it, you know, not on the stage as a concert, but on the stage as a part of a show. So it is... There's an annoying fly in this room. Okay. Uh, yeah, it is very much uh, <laughs> something that uh, would fit nicely into musical theatre. And I guess, you know, We Will Rock You, the musical, you know, is testament to that. And bad mistakes. Uh, 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 and bad mistakes. Uh, okay, I'll get this, but now I just worked out what I want to do here, so... Uh, uh, and back, back oh, I made a few Cross style harmonies. And that mistakes. Uh, oh, I've made a few. And just using the text. There is nothing complicated about what I just did. It's just using the text and just following the harmony, which I just wrote out at the bottom. Uh. Uh, and 
then here comes the now I'm wondering if I should do a secondary dominant here because that would sound really fun <laughs> um, let's see um, oops Oops. I should really be using the... So I keep forgetting to use the re-input pitches option, which I learned about quite late. Uh, huh. Which helps me to achieve what I'm trying to do without having to keep moving to the next note. Hmm. Kicked in my face. Not a thing in my Kicked in my face. There we go. So this is a little bit awkward. Uh. Let's sort this out. Uh, so this, I think, should be a solo line up here. And this one, uh, I think maybe uh, for, for a line like this, maybe just units and octaves in all parts. It's just going to make things so much easier. Down the octave, please, guys, obviously. Uh. Mm -hmm. uh. mm -hmm. Spread this out among the world of us. Like so. Let's do a little bit of a... So... That'll be... Okay, that'll look a little nicer. Maybe a uh, slightly classical. Mm. It's okay, like... Mm. Go up to F here. Uh, and then R's and other parts. to go uh, 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 it's like so oops select these spread them out and we have something that will work quite nicely And then on and on and on and on. Uh, go. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. 
me to go. Catching on and So for voice leading sake, <laughs> for voice leading sake, I'm going to do it like this. Oops. And then we need, essentially, I just want to reuse my old chorus arrangement. Uh, this is oh, so low. <laughs> I'm trying to save you know time again so i'm going to be reusing this course arrangement once and then i'll probably do a, little, a different thing just towards the end um so how do i lead Think, voice leading, voice leading, voice leading, always. Double F. Maybe. Um, drop down the octave. Mm. And I need to go on and on and on and on. This is uh, okay. then back to the chorus. Yeah, and I already, you know, spent a lot of time arranging the chorus once. Why not just do it as it is again? Boom. There, just say it this time. <laughs> uh, let's just check that. So you'll see. Hmm. Hmm. So we need to have this um, carrying out into the next bar. Like so. Uh, a little breath for these guys here. I was writing breaths. I think it's good, good practice. Okay, 
yeah, so just to check that this isn't going to be ugh, the same thing again. Let's just listen to what we have so far. We have time for that. Yeah, we have time for that. <laughs> I want to have more of a line here. Of the world. Of the world. Of the world. Of the world. bit more of a line. One problem here is we have octaves. That's going to just be slightly more balanced. Then it goes straight into another chorus. Um, we are here at <laughs> just uh, a minute, 40 seconds. So one more chorus, and then that'll be the end of this. And then I'll stick it into the score. Maybe here have tennis do the... We can have a smoother transition. Let's see. Of the smoother. I think that'll be smoother. So let's do that instead. And that also allows tenors to easily jump up to uh, their F sharp without the decrescendos in this case. Oh, oh. We are the champions. Uh. Uh. 
maybe some sort of count melody here. We are the champions. Mm-hmm. We are the champions. Let's copy out the chord so I can see what I need to, how I need to harmonize it. <laughs> Uh, uh. Maybe just the others and cross the harmonies. It's going to be a nice high note for the altos as well. Slightly changing things up, moving the melody to the tenors. There we go, now it's uh, even higher, it's more emphatic. Of the, of the world, and we are the. Right, right, we are the champignons. <laughs> uh, champignons, 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 the champignons. It's everything but the correct word. Um... And let's just write the rest of the melody into the tenors. Mm -hmm. yeah, this is obviously going to be too high for them. Uh, well, um, we'll do it in the altos, but we'll have a slightly different uh, arrangement in this case. Mm -hmm. We are the champions. We are the champions. We are the champions. We'll keep on fighting. Something like that. So you have like a high drone kind of thing. Uh, Marco says, Hi there. I was following since the beginning, but I was quite busy with work. I really like the idea of a medley, and the song choice is awesome. Looking forward to see how it turns out. Yeah, well, I mean, I've already kind of stuck in the um, the the other uh, the other songs, and I'm just kind of doing a very simple, not full song length arrangement of "We Are the Champions." Um, yeah, I mean, I, sh I should hope it'll turn out well. I mean, I could, of course, very easily adapt what I'm doing into a full arrangement of "We Are the Champions" as well. I don't know if I can get that published, but you know, that'd be an easy way to, you know, to get more mileage out of what my work. Uh, which of course I like. I like the idea of being able to use things for several things. Uh, it's a nice ringing high soprano pedal. Champ we are the champions. I did it again. 
Champions. Why am I writing piano so often? Maybe just have them with the sopranos in this case. Go. That's just a simple cadence. Wrong in the beginning, didn't I? Yeah. Yeah, I did this wrong. There we go. Yeah. Oh, no, no, we didn't catch that. Gonna sort that out. Um. Oh, no, 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 there, that's better. And we and we keep just a little bit of extra stuff happening. This maybe the same as before. In the upper part, at least. Yeah. 
10 is above altos, it's uh, not always a good choice, but in this case, it will just fill out the harmony a bit more. We're falling to the end. But with the uh, upper parts, uh, sorry, sopranos and basses in this case. Kind of adding little bits of harm of counterpoint in each voice. Uh, it might look like I'm just kind of zooming through it and doing complicated stuff, but essentially I'm keeping the melody in one part. I've got some sort of harmony happening in one or two parts, uh, and this moves around a lot. Um, and then I'm just kind of looking at what the chord is and filling in missing notes. And a lot of this is kind of very similar to what uh. I've done earlier in the arrangement as well. Uh. Uh. And let's go really, really quiet for the next bit. Champions. Put this in the altos and then just have everyone quiet. Uh, uh, oh, we are the champions. Actually, so let's add a little, little tie like so, and now really quiet. Pairs with the tenors. And then we'll have a flood and loud afterwards. So it's using the dynamics. And then boom. And this was fairly complicated, so I could also just copy this. Copy what I've done here. We'll have them suddenly massively loud. So I'll be sub fortissimo. With a oh. accent on it, because why not? It'll be this. Mm, and this needs to go up, otherwise this note will be really all divide. We are the champions. We could be quite tricky. Uh, 
We are the champions. We. It's much easier. Are the champions. Mm. We. We. Are the champions. We. Yeah, that, that's okay. Bit of practice will be fine. Maybe we'll slow down here, so we'll have a uh, brown. Actually, we'll have red. So the difference between RAL and RIT, RIT can really mean one of two things. It can mean a sudden slowdown or gradual slowdown, um, which is a bit annoying. You'd wish it kind of just meant one of them. But RAL, uh, so RIT is RITARDANDO, meaning slowing down. And RAL is RALENTANDO, which also means slowing down. But RAL always means slowing down gradually. So I then try to only use RIT when I mean sudden, sudden uh, decrease in speed rather than gradual. And I always, mean, I always use RAL when I mean gradual because then there's some difference between the two. So in this case, I want them to, to slow down rather suddenly. Maybe they'll stop on this one. Millions of the world. And then we'll have a huge chord at the end. So I'm gonna like up there. Mm, this was a uh, modal cadence. That's fine. So it's like a perfect cadence, except with a, with a minor third on the dominant. In this case, it goes to minor as well, but but I wanted to go to major at the end because that makes for a big, um, big last chord. Like I'll probably want this to be my to be my last chord, so that everyone's in a fairly high range. And then maybe the wild expression mark. There, and this because of where it lies in people's voices, this will sound very emphatic and big. Off the, and now bases all the way up on top C sharp them, tennis up on a high F sharp, altos on the A sharp here, which is just about getting into belting rage for them. And the sopranos, if there's like a belty soprano, you know, she'll knock that out of the park. Oh, I've changed my mind. Uh, 
Champions. And the altar started to sharp. And then I want them to slide up the notes. Like so. We use this thing here. Slide. So there we are. The Guess there's a bit of the... So just sliding up. That'll be a little bit more... Uh, more emphatic. have it all stops actually and then the conductor will be able to go all the world like so all the world something to that effect where we can milk it and can even have an optional Optional high and um, notes with the sopranos here. Why not? Yeah, I think that's pretty much it. And that adds in at two minutes and f 14 seconds. Which, so that'll, that'll add on quite nicely to, to the other score. Let's get rid of the piano stuff, because I don't need that. Boom, off you go. And let's close this. So now, because this uses the exact same instrumentation as my other school, it'll be easy enough to add that in. This title I don't like. It should be... <laughs> First acapella and everything. <laughs> Um, I'll, I'll give it a proper name at one point, but like, it, it's just four, three random songs stuck together. Like, it's, um, not the most artistic, uh, medley, to be honest, but it is, you know, something that's going to work and that I'm not going to have to spend ages on. Medley, uh, now I'm appending, we are the champions. Now it just puts it at the end here. So we are essentially changing to a whole different... Uh, time signature. Uh, Goes over here. Sometimes getting these things right can be a bit of a pain uh, when you're appending scores because there's all sorts of extra invisible information attached to the score which will then show up in all sorts of weird places and you don't want it. And um, But yeah, I think... Uh, yeah. So it's not the end of the section. So we go into the inspector and it says here, section end. Turn that off. And unlock the format again so that we don't end up with uh, everything in the wrong place. Optimize star spacing. There. And now, yeah, that's just over seven minutes. So it's perfect. And yeah, so now I got to sort out, <laughs> should I play you this whole thing? It is literally just a bunch of songs which I've previously arranged and which you can actually find recordings of, so it's a lot more interesting to listen to, you know, the recordings rather than the MIDI playback. Uh, I'd recommend you rather check out the the recordings of these. Of course, oops, um, some of these I've not had recorded. You know, obviously not the new one, but also 
uh, Twist and Shout. I don't think there's a recording of that on the internet. Uh, but we can listen to the transitions because those are what I've been working out here. And I can show you. Oh, there's a lot of layouts I need to fix. Ugh. Uh, take off these ad libs. That's fine. Let's take out the optional repeat because we don't want to take that time. It's uh, anybody got time for that? We're gonna move on to the next part of the, of the medley. There. Now the layout's roughly there. Let's optimize our spacing and a reset no spacing. These are my two favorite options because they allow you to very quickly uh, get through. Let us listen to just the transitions. I'll just go through and um, I'll delete that because there's a bunch of different people that wrote these and I, um, I gotta fill in all this stuff later. You know, you guys don't care about me f watching me fill in you know, who wrote the song and when. Like, I do that usually because it makes the sheet music look a lot more organized and professional. <laughs> but, um, yeah, that's stuff I can do in my own time. This all looks fine. Okay, so at the end of 9 to 5, 9 to 5, um... <laughs> This, so you can control how how extreme your accelerandos are by going into the inspector. So that's home inspector, and then you can decide, you know, how big a change should it be. In this case, maybe you know, increasing the tempo to one hundred and thirty three percent is a bit much. So maybe I don't know, one hundred twenty five. Again, this is just for playback. <laughs> see here there's like an extra bit of copyright data which actually let's uh, grab the let's grab the year here I want that because I want to stick that at the start so. <laughs> there'll be all sorts of copyright things okay so that transition into twist and shout that you know it's just like boom. it's really really simple stuff um but it works and that'll help people get into the new one and then of course I know that my singers here are gonna they're gonna know this this song already so they'll be like okay well we know this we just sing what we know we'll just use our muscle memory and that's all fine that's really in the wrong spot isn't it um kind of want to do i prefer doing system breaks where there's um rehearsal marks rehearsal marks are really useful like don't uh, don't neglect them put them in like they do help you during your rehearsals because it makes it easier just to quickly find out where, where you're supposed to be going from. Uh, it's a bit further down, maybe a bit more space. That's all fine, 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 fine. Okay, so here's the, the, the end of Twist and Shout going into We Are the Champions. Um, And here I need to, it's basically the same tempo again, I think. Uh, so, tempo giusto. Uh, I'll just write the same tempo. Actually, this is a metric modulation. So go to text, then system text and metric modulation. What we want is essentially, we want Crotcha to stay the same. So like when we go from twist and shout, tempo doesn't really change. The it's just that the feel changes. Mm. 
Here we go slightly slower. Um, yeah. So it's slightly slower. Actually, we'll just write slower and then we'll just, it'll be a rehearsal thing. Mm -hmm. do, 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 do even have them go into the so sometimes when you have certain tempo changes um then it's easier to have the tempo change happen kind of before the actual tempo starts because that gives the composer like the conductor a chance to go like ah, we are the champions that might be a better solution actually so in this case, I'll do this, and we'll go into 6-8 here. So what this does is it just gives people a chance to readjust their brains, and it gives the, the conductor a chance to, to indicate to them, this is the new tempo, guys. Um, there we go, we know it's in 6-4, so it's fine. Um, oh dear, what happened here? Ah, uh, there's all sorts of... Oh, I see. These actually don't carry over. Let me... Okay, so there's some layout stuff. Marco says, may I suggest nine to shout the champions as the title or something like that? Yeah, I'll do... <laughs> it's a good suggestion. I'll just make up some, some crap. Like, it's... It's so sometimes, you know, you, you do a medley where you put in a lot of effort and you, you make sure that the songs work in counterpoint. Like I did a really, and this you can find uh, if you search for Katy Perry medley, London Contemporary Voices, that's a medley I've done, which I'm actually really proud of because I managed to, you know, get all the songs to kind of work in counterpoint. And it just feels like this this really amazing nerdy feeling when you realize that you... Um, um, th th you managed to get something like that, that working. Okay, here I will actually change this. Uh, so originally I had claps. But I, because we're going into, we are the champions. Oops. Yeah, because we're going into We Are the Champions, I'd rather not have them clapping. It's just going to sound a bit naff uh, with the tempo change. It's, uh, ugh. Yeah, tempo changes can be tricky dicky. So you put the tempo change here, and you'll see that this will, this will work in um in a performance because it gives the conductor a chance to give them the new tempo before they actually start singing actually let's have them they need to take a little breath i always write in breaths always 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 Now, how am I past transitioning? That's easy, that's just the fourth. That's back to where you started. That's fine. Yeah, all fine. Fine, 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 fine. Uh, let's make all the dynamics. To our voices. Okay, so here's the last bit of our oh, uh, twist and shout.
we go. And that that will that'll work quite nicely. Yeah, I just still need to sort out a couple of layout things here. It's uh Um Yeah, little things will creep in and then you have to fix them and but I mean honestly this does look pretty good most of the time. Like here, like that that line for instance really should be down here. It's stuff that you, you kind of get used to, to spotting when Sibelius has a janky solution to the layout and you need to sort it out. Um, yeah, so now this is pretty much done, really. So this, um, you know, uh, taking, taking some existing material, arranging one more, you know, fairly quickly, not really spending loads of time on it, but just getting it to a presentable stage where, you know, it could be added to the existing material. I mean, that just took me, you know, just under two hours uh, to arrange out and then just suck them all together like this. And so the, yeah, I realized that it's kind of lazy to, <laughs> to, to reuse your old arrangements like this, but like medleys are, they're just kind of crowd pleasers. It's the sort of thing where if you have the material already, it's, there's no need to reinvent the wheel. If you can get the songs to match together thematically and they will easily fit together without you having to spend loads of time uh, making new arrangements, then you can just do yourself a favor and, and, and do that. Um, like uh, one kind of um, intellectual issue I have with, uh, <laughs> with uh, medleys is the fact that you kind of, you don't really give any of the songs a whole lot of time. They just kind of fly by and you, you know, you're not getting a chance to really enjoy any of the songs before it's on to the next one. Um, you can make that work when you're, you know, try, when you're being clever and you're like, you know, doing them together. And yeah, it's, it's really quite fun when you, when you get medleys to work quite well. But more often than not, it's just going to be like a quick way to get through a bunch of songs and be like, oh, it's this song now. Oh, it's this song now. So, you know, I... Don't don't overthink medleys, you know. You can, but also like consider how much time you're putting in it, and you know, is it really going to be worth, you know, the payoff? Uh, uh, Michael says, "Is something like this a publishing nightmare?" Well, you hit the nail on the head there, Michael. The answer is yes, and the 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 long and short of it is, if you want to shit, publish sheet music, don't do medleys. Ain't gonna happen. Sorry, mate. <laughs> yeah, this is that's also part of the reason why I wouldn't advise anyone to put a lot of time into doing medleys because you spend all this time trying to make it cool and work, and then in the end, you can't even publish it. You can't even put the, the music out because it's. Um, I mean, unless all the songs are owned by the same publishing company, um, and you know, they're willing to roll with that. Like it's no, it's uh, usually publishers won't do medleys because there are so many different rights holders involved and this medley for instance no not going to get published but that's fine though because these i mean i think have i published none of these have been published already i think but like 95 that could probably get published twist and shout that could get published and if i finish this uh this you know shortened arrangement i did of we are the champions that could probably get published too and then and that would be fine. But to have them all mashed together like this, no, that leads to um, complications, one might say, in getting them published. So, but yeah, publishing is something I have been meaning to, to look into in an episode. I'm going to have to, uh, it might be a little while. So I have uh, another project on at the moment. I was asked by my university, like I said at the beginning, to prepare... Uh, instructional videos on how to use Sibelius, the software, because, well, obviously I do it a lot and they knew that I do it a lot. So they asked me, uh, which I am currently in the process of scripting and it's, uh, it's going to be, uh, it's going to be a long one because it is, uh, it's eight videos. And so far I've got about 32 pages of script written and I, you know, I am just over halfway. So there's, um, not that my output of, you know, full videos have has been massive or you know something to write home about recently but essentially this is going to take up a lot of my time 
uh, because it's also paid work and I do need to, <laughs> I need money now that I'm going back to the UK and um, you know won't be living for very cheap at my mother's house <laughs> I will have to be able to pay my bills so but I'll see I do have uh, so I you know put out the um, uh, the video of uh, how my process for arranging my friend Connor Ruff's song Soldier I put up that a few weeks ago and we're just now working on getting the music video put together so um, just got Connor's uh, uh, vocals a few days ago and mixed them in and it's it's sounding it's sounding really quite nice um, so I might have to just prioritize doing that and so um, once I kind of have uh, my my schedule a bit under control because uh, I'm getting a bit nervous about the, these videos, so I got to make sure that I that I finish them. The um, sweetest ones that is. But once that's under control, then it'll be easier for me to, you know, create a plan for the next few videos. But yeah, stuff like publishing is something I will probably cover because it is something that a lot of people ask me about. Not that I'm an expert on it, like not in the least, but I have published some arrangements. I and I we did look at, you know, copyrights and stuff in my music college so i'm not going in completely blank maybe i'll uh, see if i've got i'll probably have some friends who will know so like a copyright lawyer who can like supplement it's um it's interesting and it's important and as an arranger if you want to publish you, you do kind of need to know what you're getting yourself into but i'll give you a free tip there don't do medleys <laughs> uh michael says public domain medley yes yeah, that's not even a joke like christmas music medleys tend to be public domain and that's fine it's public domain you can do whatever you whatever you want with public domain music you can print it and wipe 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 your bottom with it and uh, that's fine you can film yourself wiping your bottom with it and no one is gonna be able to well they're gonna say that it's in bad taste but like there's not gonna be the person who wrote the 12 days of christmas isn't gonna come after you because they're long dead and the, and the songs in the copy uh, in the public domain yeah so public domain yeah that is true if you write a public domain medley, knock yourself out. Um, but uh, for copyrighted music, uh, it's uh, yeah, it's a it's a publishing nightmare. Okay, uh, it's gonna yeah. I might uh, I have finished this medley more or less, so I might just call it for today. I realize it's a bit of a shorter one. I, I did you did get to watch me arranging at least a little bit of uh, We Will Rock You. No, sorry. Uh, we are the champions. We will rock you. Um, I was asked to put into the other one. Uh, and uh, how does one arrange we will rock you? Like it's just it's just the, the the body percussion, and someone sings, and I'll have to think about it. Yeah, that'll be for a later episode. As I mentioned, I'm not going to be able to do a stream next week because I'll be traveling to the UK. <laughs> But even if I weren't, I have to hand back my my microphone and my sound interface, which I've borrowed. But once I get back to London, I will have access to my own equipment again. And so <laughs> it'll be fine. And then I'll do... Yeah, so it'll be two weeks until the next stream. Um, but I'm sure uh, you'll be able to manage. <laughs> uh, Patterson said, uh, I have learned a lot. Thanks for the detailed conversation. Well, thank you very much. I'm, uh, I'm happy to hear it. Um... Do, uh, if you have stuff you want me to cover in episodes, then, you know, you can leave a comment here or you can put one on the videos. Uh, I am looking for, you know, more topics to cover. I don't have loads of work lined up for when I go back to London. I just have a few things, uh, but, you know, I will have, um, you know, if nothing comes along, of course, I, you know, you always hope that, you, you know, someone's going to be like, oh, we are working on this massive show and we'll pay you this huge fee to work on the show. And you're like, yep, I'll do it. But if that doesn't happen, then it would be great to get a few suggestions on, you know, topics to cover for these videos. So yeah, let me know. Anyway, y'all have a wonderful weekend. And uh, yeah, I shall see you in the next stream.